So it's orthodoxy, orthopraxy. Uh, let me just, I forgot the other verse there. Let me just read this one. It says this, okay? Um, it's up here. Obey, he tells them of the Pharisees. He says, obey what the Pharisees tell you. Obey what the Pharisees tell you, but not do not do what they do. Obey what the Pharisees teach you, but do not do what they do. And so basically what he's saying is the Pharisees are hypocrites because they teach the right thing, but then they don't do the right thing. And he's saying, wait, you're my disciples. You teach and do. It's not enough to just know the words. You've got to be able to do it. So it's not just orthodoxy. And I've been in how many contexts where there was really a prize in this orthodoxy that we hold pure doctrine, the real doctrine of Christ from Scripture. And orthodoxy is really important. And to hold true doctrine based on Scripture about Christ, about God, about ourselves, about the world, those things are very, very important. Orthodoxy is very important. But there also has to be connected with that true uh, ways of thinking, true ways of doing. In other words, Christianity is about the head, yes, and by the way, it's not Christianity is not just about the heart. Christianity is about the, our head, the way we think about things. It is much that, that our head. It is also about our heart, but it also is about our hands, what we do, not just what we think, think, not just what we feel, but what we do. And so Jesus talks about our hands as well, what we do, heads, heart, heads, heart, and hands, all committed. To be disciples. So do not obey what they say, but don't do what they do. So Christianity is a brotherhood, and this is what we just said, and therefore humility, um, humility, not power, is part of being a follower of Christ. A disciple of Christ is one who's humble. It's one who's humble, not into power and, and all those types of things. I often told my students there's there's three bad things money, sex, and power. People tell you, watch out for these three things. These three things will get you. Money, sex, and power. Now, sex, don't do sex, it's dirty, okay? You get caught doing sex, uh, you know all the scandals we've had from presidents of the United States down, we just found out now about John F. Kennedy and things, all sorts of stuff going down. Uh, presidents all the way down. Don't do sex, it's dirty, you get caught, you know, you're exposed, okay? Sex is bad, okay, in those kind of contexts, okay? Money, I often said, I teach at Gordon College. You guys are Gordon College students. You don't have to worry about money. Your student debts and what is it? We owe $15 trillion in America. Don't worry about money. You're never going to have any anyways. So don't worry about the money. What's the clean one? Money, sex, and power. What's the clean one? It's actually power. Power is the subtle one. It's clean. When a person has power, people you know snuggle up to them, man, and they smooth with them. Power is the thing that is sought after. It's the clean sin. And so what I'm saying is it's the most subtle and therefore the most deadly. And so be very careful. Money, sex, and power. Eh, people say, I don't want to do sex, I don't want to do money, stuff, because it looks bad. Power is the name of the game. And you'll see a lot of people going after power. And all I'm saying is, well, be careful. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. no. My kingdom is the servant. It's the humility kind of thing. It's the what we call there on the screen the upside-down kingdom. The kingdom of this world has the king and all his delegates and people under him. In Christ's kingdom, what? The king becomes the servant of all. And so it's the kingdom upside down from what we see. So this is, you know, he's talking about discipleship of Christ and stuff. What separated the wise and the foolish? What separated the wise and the foolish man? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. What separated those two? Check this out. Let me just read this verse for you. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Everyone who hears the words and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man. So Christ, again, is emphasizing a disciple must be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. Sounds like the book of James, okay? Here's another one that I think is, is kind of stunning. Uh, and this one's uh, with Jesus' family. Do you remember in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus is out there and they, say, they come up to Jesus and they say, Jesus, your family's outside. They want to see you and things. And so and Jesus responds like this. Then he points to his disciples 
He points to, they say, Jesus, your mother and brothers are here and stuff. Why don't you going to see them and think? Jesus points to his disciples and says, these are my mother and my brothers. Anyone, now, who is Jesus' mother and brothers? He tells us explicitly here, what does it mean to be part of Jesus' family? What does it mean to be part of Jesus' family? Now, this is not a slam on his mother. This is not a slam on his mother or his brothers. As we said, James will be writing the book of James and Jude, uh, possibly, and his brothers of Jesus and Mary, of course. Does Jesus take very, um, even till the end, does Jesus take care of his mother Mary? You remember Jesus is on the cross in the book of John. Jesus, while he's on the cross, where are the disciples? The disciples are running scared. Who's at the foot of the cross of Jesus as Jesus is dying? It's these women, the Marys. I swear half the people in the New Testament of women are all named Mary, okay? And Mary Magdalene and Mary, Mary whatever. But he looks down from the cross and he sees Mary, his mother, and he says, John, he says, hey, the beloved disciple, you take care of her. You take care of her. He's concerned, even in his death, he takes care of his mother. So Jesus is not demeaning his mother at all, but what he's saying is, who is my mother? Jesus is constituting kind of a new family. And what does it take to get into the family of Jesus? Jesus explains here, how, what, is the, what are the entrance requirements to being a disciple, a, a follower of Jesus as part of his family? Anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Notice it says, it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Is that what it says? No, it doesn't say that. It says, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, sister, and mother. And so you get again the emphasis on orthopraxy, not orthodoxy here, but orthopraxy. He who does the will of my Father in heaven. So that's a really important thing, and that's uh, those are some tough things. Now, 